Greetings everyone. So in this short video I'm just going to walk you through some of the new buildings, the new custom buildings that you'll find in the Fate of Iberia DLC. Because custom buildings are wonderful. They all have different effects and those effects can change your gameplay. They can really be used to do interesting things in a campaign. Now I'm not going to go through what those different interesting things mostly are because as usual part of the fun with all of this stuff is discovering and thinking for yourself about how you can use game mechanics and buildings to do things. And you know watch my streams if you want to see me do that. That's cool. So let's have a look now and let's also kind of talk about how you can spot these because yeah you can find lists out on the internet but it's also just quite fun with all custom buildings and when you're playing in a different area to just have a bit of a look around because the nice thing about this game is you will find it shows them on the map and let's start our first one here and this is the Rock of Gibraltar so what does the Rock of Gibraltar do? Well I actually think this is one of the most interesting ones in the game for reasons that aren't really obvious and that's the stewardship bonus it gives you plus one and the diplomatic range bonus which can actually be very very good and useful in terms of getting several achievements and also potentially in terms of grabbing extra cultures or cultural things to do interesting merges and everything else with so just be aware of that one it also gives a defender advantage and a fort level plus that 10% dev growth is also quite useful. You could actually turn this particular province into quite a natty little capital province with a bit of work. So what else have we got? Well, we already had uh, lurking down here the Great Mosque of Cordoba. So this was an existing building, but you can see it has really, really good benefits if you're playing as an Islamic faith character. So you get the tax bonuses from it, you get the levy size, the holding taxes, development growth bonuses. It's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. But it's not the only building like that. We'll look at a Catholic version of that in a bit. But let's just com continue to kind of pan our map over. And if you're looking carefully, you'll have spotted our next one. It's lurking down here. So this is the Alhambra Fortress Ruins. It's a special building and again it gives you Fort Level plus two, Defender Advantage plus two and Garrison plus 250. Given that this is also a mountain province that means that this really becomes a brutal attritional place for people to fight because remember as long as you control the fort you have the Defender Advantage. So it's just something to think about in terms of that province. If we head a little bit further up, and remember, we can keep scanning around for these things, we can see our next one. And it's here. I really like the look of this one. And this, these are those moments where I wish you could actually pan the CK3 map around. Because actually, if we look at what this is, uh, it's lurking in this province here. It is the actual capital. This is the city walls of Toledo. This has a fort level plus two, a garrison size plus 25% hostile raid time plus 50%, holding tax boost, defender advantage boost, death growth boost and dev growth plus two per month. That is pretty mean in terms of dev growth boosts there. If you boost that province with other buildings that boost dev by building cities with uh, the right buildings in them, you're going to get some pretty pretty killer dev, dev growth going on over there. Now our next building is one that doesn't actually spawn at game start. But so that you can see it in its glory, I've actually built it here so you can, you can see it. And this is lurking in Segovia. And this is the Alcazar of Segovia, which I apologize, I have almost certainly pronounced wrong, but that's what it is. Rising like a bow of a ship from a rocky crag, this fortress is an awe-inspiring sight. As majesty, majestic as it is impenetrable, it is the greatest of all castles in the kingdom of Cas castles, Castile. Now I really like the look of this building, I think it's a really cool little building. And actually its benefits aren't bad either, particularly if you're starting in a kind of count or, du or duke level round here. Fort level plus four, which given it's in hills is, is pretty amazing. Defender advantage plus six, garrison boosts, holding tax boosts, control growth. That martial level per level of fame can be useful, but it does a renown boost as well and renown boosts are lovely. So let's continue to look around and we'll see if we can find some more buildings. And you should by now be getting used to spotting them on the map. And if you have, you'll have spotted that there are at least kind of three beyond one, the one we're looking at here that are right on screen now. In fact, I think there are actually four. But let's have a look. Let's start over this side. So down here, you will find the Algeferia. 
This is another one that gives a fort level boost, a defender advantage boost, garrison boost, holding tax boost, control, the diplomacy per level of fame again, useful in context, and that monthly renown boost is quite nice as well. It's a great palace fortress built on the Soraya Plain, and it's a testament to the wealth of Zaragotha. Uh, interestingly, Zaragotha and um, Aragon have been kind of combined as a duchy in this latest DLC, and that's just something to watch for. There's a nice um, mission you can do to create, or decision you can take to create the kingdom of Aragorn, which is nice, quite a nice one to do. So what else did we have in that photo? Well again, pop over here and you've actually got three buildings in this little corner of, of Spain. This is something worth noting. If you're looking to keep hold of some duchies that really allow you to consolidate some power and benefit, these three provinces over here are very, very useful. Lurking over here we have the city of Lugo. Like sort of Toledo, it has walls. Is Roman walls and they give a tax of plus one, a fort level boost, garrison boost and this is what I particularly like. The holder and the holder of this county get a learning boost and that's quite handy. It's going to boost your your provinces, it boosts your, your city, your mayor who might be a better, a better, uh, better councillor for you but also it's going to boost you yourself um, if you get it right by holding the county. Lurking over here, up here in Corona, you will find the Farum Brigantium. This ancient lighthouse is said to have been based on its more famous sister in Alexandria. Having guided seafarers for untold centuries, it remains important to Galithia's coastal trade. Now, I think this is probably one of the weakest of the new bonus buildings you'll get. But it still gives you that nice tax bonus. And one thing that's in my head, and again, think of your own play playthroughs, is how do I do a run that leverages the benefits that this building gives? And frankly, I think if you were going for a Viking Raider run, this would actually be quite a good building to hold. So maybe if you're starting up here in the earlier starts, Heistine hanging around up here, it may make this area of, of the Iberian Peninsula a bit more of a, uh, a good thing to take. Because the ability to get, get to places quickly, raid them and get away quickly, could be enormously advantageous. Then, lurking over here, we have, in Santiago, we have the other building you have to build. And this is the one that was in the game already, but it's kind of a bit different to what it was. But you'll see it kind of balances out the Great Mosque. This, if you're a Catholic ruler in Spain, is a must-hold province. This holding gives tax of plus three per month. Um, the county gets a massive holding taxes boost, so if you're optimizing your counties, as you've seen from my other videos, and you're optimizing your duchies, this is your money duchy. Because that boost, on top of every other bonuses you can boost, is incredible. Particularly when you combine it with that dev boost, and when you combine it with things like the piety, the renown, the holy order higher cost, and the learn language scheme power. So that is a really, really useful building to have. And that, to my knowledge, is all the new buildings that we've, we've had added, all the new special buildings that we've been had added in the latest DLC. I might be wrong. If you've spotted one that, that I haven't spotted, if you're aware of one in, in the Iberian Peninsula I'd missed before, do let me know in comments and we'll have a look at them. And if little videos like this, looking at some of those special buildings are useful, let me know and we'll look at some of the other ones in the rest of the world as well. There's some very, very nice ones in Britain and there's also some, some lurking good ones down in India. But that's for another day. Hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on streams and on future videos when we're playing CK3. Thank you.